right, so let me make sure the homework shows up in here. I want to remind you guys, because I've been having this conversation with a few people, if it's in the plan book box, it goes in your plan book. So you are not just writing 6 through 10. You're writing 4.1.1, number 6 through 10, so that there's no confusion on what section your homework comes from, where it is, or when you go to use homework help or the online textbook, then you also know what section to click into. So make sure you write down everything highlighted in blue right now. <coughs> so today we're going to talk about similar figures. Now, what does it mean to be similar? Like if somebody says, oh, you're similar to me, Noah. Those two people are similar, or that shape is similar to that, or that group is similar to that. Allie? Yeah. yeah, you have something in common. So we are going to be investigating when our shapes have something in common and how we can formalize that relationship. So we do this using a couple different vocab words. So we'll be using this all the way through the chapter, but the two vocab words in our intro here uh, I might as well just read through the intro. So if you have your book open and you're reading with me right here. So today we're going to extend our study of ratios. Ratio compares one value to another value by looking at enlargements and reductions of geometric figures. Think of a copy machine like what I use to run all our copies. When you can select that it will zoom in or zoom out on the image, and that is your enlargement button. So every length of that picture will get bigger. Every width, every piece, everything would get bigger or smaller proportionally, right? Like on a computer when you stretch a picture to make it bigger or zoom in or something like that. So that number then would be called the multiplier. So any number that tells you how to change something, whether it's a, a fraction or a whole number, so it can increase or decrease. And scale factor is specific to when we know we're changing the size of something. So I know ever build like a model car, model train, model rocket, anything like that, like build a model. There are scales, if it's an accurate model, there are scales that tell you what scale it is. Is it a 1 to 40, 1 to 50, 1 to 200? Like what is the reduction of this little model car compared to the actual like race car? So I want you guys to dive into 4-1 and see if you can do this. Now, I will tell you, you want to be strategic with your dot paper, because we're using this through the whole lesson. I would not put the first thing that you draw in the middle of it, because that's going to get in the way. So I would put it like in a corner, try to be strategic as we draw in the dot paper. So dive into this with your new teams. Um, anyone need the resource paper, raise your hand, we'll bring you up. This stays a group of three that's convenient to go to pass and use this question. You can if you want to do that. So we have the question as well. I think this will end up being a group of three. So, what I So, Emily's absent today. Is anybody else absent from our class that we recommend? I don't think so. So, you, my, my group's of three around here. One of you guys will be picking up.
By now, we should have the original shape down on our paper. If not, that says something about the pace that you're working at. When we enlarge by a percentage, we look at the decimal value of that percent. So 300 per cent divided by 100 gives us 3. And that tells you that means we multiply each length by 3. Then make sure we label all of our sides that we can. Be aware, though, if... Um, give me your eyes for just a second. I need to zoom on this. But... So if I start drawing, and I say that this is 1, or this is 1, is this 1 diagonally? Oh. So we can label horizontal, vertical, but the diagonals, we can't call that one. It would actually be slightly longer. Not one and a half. Just don't label it anything right now. But it is not one. So I used highlighter for a reason, so we could easily see the dots. If I have one here, one here, one here, two there, one there, two there, and then we can't label that diagonal length. Then it tells you to scale it by 300%. You should, on your paper, have a shape that is enlarged, tripling every dimension. So, if I triple my 2, what's my new bottom become? 6, right? So I'm going to move it over here. Now be careful, though. If I start drawing at the bottom left, I might end up going off my dot paper. So I'm going to start drawing top right and do it over here. So my 1 will turn into 3, 4 dots, but 3 spaces. Then I have the diagonal. Now my diagonal was just a diagonal gap of one. We'll call that a diagonal one. So now I should run a diagonal. What's that, Grant? Diagonal three. Diagonal three. So there's one, two, three. Then you guys told me six already. One, two, three, four, five, six for the bottom. How tall on the left side? Three. Then another six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, and over. And make sure we label all of those. That three, 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 six, three, six. Any questions on how we draw them? Can we see that this is just like when we zoom in on something? Every part of the shape has been preserved, except it got bigger. So is this the same shape? Like, are they twins? Not quite, right? So they're, are they the same shape? Yeah. Are they the same size? No. This is where we get the name similar figures. So these two shapes are similar figures, if you want to write that. And in our notes, sorry, in our book, it tells us how to figure this out. We check the ratio. So is everyone good here? I'm going to take a snapshot, and then I'm going to drag back over.
So, when things are corresponding, can you check out the definition up here? Corresponding is points, sides, angles, any pieces that we can relate angle to angle, side to side, anything like that, that are at the same part. Right? So my bottom green and my bottom purple are corresponding. If we set up a ratio of copy to original with some of these side lengths, what are we going to get with the copied length over the original length? Or copied height over original height? So let's try it. So on your paper, set up some of these ratios, the copy dimension over the original. <coughs> Excuse me, but they have to correspond. So if I use this 3, I'm going to use this 1. So use some corresponding lines, set up some ratios. They should all be equal. So we are setting up ratios of the copy to the original. So if I look at this 3, I have to use this 1 because they are corresponding pieces, the left side height. So that ratio would be 3 to 1. If my shapes are similar, what should happen is any time I do that, will 3 to 1 equal 6 to 2? Yes. Will this 3 and this 1 preserve the ratio? Yes. What about this 6 and this 2? Yes. All those ratios, every time we set up copy over original, I know this is super bright, it has to be the same. And here, they all come out to be Now, what I really care that you do write down in your notes, so I'm going to get a new page for this, that copy, so please write this down in your toolkit or somewhere, that copy over the original, and by copy you could also put like new shape, that gives us something called the scale factor. Try 4, 2. I'll give you some time because this one is a bit more difficult to draw. Be careful. Make sure you guys all agree on sizes of things before you get too far into this. You want to copy the figure at 50% of the original. Try to do all pieces of this. I'll give you plenty of time. Try to do all parts of this. A through D.
That would be the new one, but where's the original? Okay, you gotta draw the original hand. Sketch the figure shown at the right and make a copy. Careful reading. Is there anything we can do to save the book? So I was discussing with Kate back there, and I don't think they want it. Now I, I went back to Kate and I'm like, okay, this looks pretty big. She was like, yeah, it's 50%. I was like, you're making a copy that's 50% of what you saw. She acted, and th this is totally fine, she acted as if what was in the book was 50%, and she created one that was double. But if what we want to do is make one that's 50% of the original, will it get bigger or smaller? Smaller, right? Here's what I mean by saving paper. What's another way we can think of 50%? Half, right? So if everything's going to be half, then I can look at what things are right now and calculate what they're going to be. So if that's two, 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 what are all the new ones going to be? Ones. If this is four and four, what are the new ones going to be? Two. And if this is two diagonals right now, the new one's going to be one diagonal. What if I do this? And then one, two. One up, one over, one up, one over, one up, one over. I can fit my new one inside my old one, can't I? Because if I'm doing a redemption, now you don't have to. I just want to show you guys that you can, and then it let me draw it right here. But when we're reducing, our new one should fit inside the old one, and it, we should be able to see, if we center it, we can kind of see the zoom. And then if we label these sides, two, one, 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 two, and then a one diagonal. Check out these ratios. When you set up the copy shape to the original, what do you notice? So try this with your team. Make sure all of you are getting the same thing. Check with each other.
you get a number bigger than one? What do you get? Anybody, everybody, what do you get? Ha. Hmm. So wait, on the first one, when we set up the ratios, we got three for each of them. Now, when I set up like two compared to four, or one compared to two, or even like the one diagonal compared to the two diagonal, all of these come out to be half. That's because the scale factor is one half. So the scale factor is the fraction form of the percent. And if you're talking about 300%, that fraction form is three, because we don't need the one on bottom. Any questions on four, one, or four, two? Most of us have a pretty easy time with this because it's spatial, it's visual. We can see it, it's tangible, we can even build it if we want. So try 4-3. Now that does not mean that if you struggle you should feel bad. Everybody's brain is hardwired to have an advantage at algebra or geometry. There have been studies done. You'll either preference algebra or geometry, it's just how your brain works. So if you kind of struggle with this, it means you're a better algebraic person. If you're doing really well with this, this is like super easy for you, you're a geometry person probably. Play with this one. Work through it as a team. If your shapes have to start overlapping, they can. They should not have to, but they can if you need to. Now you notice how the diagonal is not even countable. One way we could look at this diagonal is make it a triangle. The diagonal spans two over and three down. Even though we can't run it straight through points, we can kind of say it cuts that corner two in, three down. It connects that. So if you visualize that, it might help you. <coughs> Always vampire cough. By the way, we're getting into cold and flu season. Into your elbow, not into your hand. Your hand first. Get all touch, all the seams. Now I want you to be strategic. When you get to part C, think about what scale factor will make your life easier. So compare what is the height of our shape, what is the width of our shape. If we want to make it smaller, what scale factor would do that easily?
What lengths do I have? What's my height here? Six. What's my width? Three height here. Here? And then that awkward diagonal. Don't, don't try to give it a number. Who thinks they know what scale factor will make our life easy and make our shape small? Scale factor of 2, 200, and that's going to make it smaller? Oh, smaller. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant bigger. Yeah. Um, it says choose a scale factor. Though. So I'm going to give you guys another minute to talk about this. How do we make it smaller? What scale factor? So we've seen two scale factors so far. We saw a scale factor of 3, which related to 300%, and we saw a scale factor of a half, which related to 50%. What scale factor should we use here to work easily with my numbers? Talk about it for a minute. There's a word missing. Because we have some people that want to ruin things over there. <laughs> If I tell you to go out, find a pizza, and multiply it by one, you're still going to have a pizza. But if I tell you to go out, find a pizza, and then double the amount of pizza you have, you're going to have two pizzas, right? So if I tell you to go out and get a pizza and then make it smaller, we'd have to multiply, because we can't divide, we have to multiply by what sort of number? A fraction, right? A fraction, a proper fraction where my number on top is smaller than my number on bottom. Here, working with lengths of 6 and 3, what is a scale factor that would easily reduce those values? 2 would make it bigger. Be yeah. careful, we have to use a fraction here. Grant? A third. Think, can I easily do half of three? No, not really. No, I can't. I know what it is. But if I want to draw it, doing a third scale factor will make my life super easy. So let's try this. So let's apply a scale factor of one third. So now, instead of being six tall, how tall will I be? What is a third of six? Two. So there's my height. What's a third of three? The width. One. What's a third of three, my height on the right side? One. Shoot, what's a third of one up top there? A third, so now I can only go a third of this gap, and then connect, just like that. If you did a half, anyone do a half? If you did a half, you'll have something like where you go one and a half, one and a half, um, three, Half of one is half, and then that. If you want scale factor of half, now that that's a proper answer to what it asks. They said just make it smaller. 
You could also go, you, I mean, you could go as small as you want. You could do a scale factor of a tenth, a twelfth, a twentieth, one hundredth. You'd just be getting really, really small. Questions on how we draw the new shapes? Moving on to four, four. Yeah, that's actually the one thing. What? <coughs> figure out if these figures are similar. And I'm going to take this a step further. If so, calculate what this is, what that ratio copy to original is. So I'll slide this down so you can see a little easier. You want to calculate, are these shapes similar? Which means every single corresponding relationship has to have the same relationship. If they're similar, what is the scale factor? You do not need to draw these. What we're doing is trying to do the math to figure out are they similar? Do they hold true with the rules? So the copy here is the 44885 pixels, and the original would be 2344. So my copy is bigger. Than it. it says copies on the right. Sorry, my zoom. In your book, it's easier to see. My zoom made it look goofy. Copies here, originals here. Yeah, so if you check your book, huh, actually, it's not that much easier to see. It's like the copies on the right, the original book. So, yeah, guys, in B, your book looks kind of funky. The copy's on the right. The original's on the left.
So we should on our paper, as I look around at blank papers and people awkwardly staring at each other, we should have set up at least, even if you don't know what to do, what I put on the board. Because if I wrote it up there, we're probably going to fill it in. We're probably going to do it. And that's most likely what you want to do to solve the problem. So those of you with blank papers, come on, turn it on. Put a little bit of effort into it. In 4.4, you want to at least have copied down that we're going to compare a copy to the original, and hopefully these ratios come out equal. So for A, if I start doing this, you have to choose corresponding sides. If I choose the four on the top for the copy dimension, I have, sorry, four on top for the copy dimension, I then have to choose this two goes on the bottom. Questions for how I did that? They're corresponding because they're in the same location. So then if I use this 8, I have to use four. this 4. Is this true so far? Are those equal? Yep, so this checks out so far. If I use this 8 and that 4, do I even need to write that? I've already got it. I already have that ratio, 8 to 4. So we could write it again, or we could say we already did that. What about this 4 to that 2? We already have that. And, okay, so we don't have the 5.6 compared to the 2.8. Oh, crap. Make your life easier. Think about it like 56 and 28. How does 4 compare to 2 and 8 compare to 4? Say it louder. Double, double right? Is 56 double your 28? Yes. Are these shapes similar? Yeah. Yes. When all of these ratios are equal, we are then able to say they are similar. Check with your team. Is B similar? No. no. Your team. <laughs> no. I'm glad that you think no. we're all no. we're all a team. But okay, so some people already said no, so hold on. So, let's start this then. Top relates to top, so copy on top, original on bottom. What would that be, 18 compared to 36? What would that reduce down to? Half, right? Be careful. You said two, just remember we're, we're proper fraction here. Excuse me. So half, my copy is half my original. Okay, well that's still true. Okay, copy on top, original on bottom. Is that still true? No. Oh, here we have a problem. This is not true. They are not equal. So that means we're not proportional. We're not proportional, which means we are not similar. Remember, proportional means fractions or ratios that equal other ratios. It can be different numbers. They have to actually be equal. These are not equal. Because I know 19 is not half of 30. And I can stop right there. 8 is half of 16. 26 is half of 52. The rest of it works. It's just right here, that 19 and that 30 that makes it fall apart. That's all I got for you guys today. Please try the homework. Um, stay posted. I don't know if I'm going to do this before winter, uh, before Thanksgiving break, but I'll probably do this between Thanksgiving and winter break. I think we're going to start a reward system where if everyone in your group has their homework done the next day, you get a bonus point. Not anything to do with grades. And then we'll keep track of points, and the winning teams will have like a donut party or something. So, have that idea in the back of your head. Do your homework. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Nathan, if you have donuts, like, you do like the best part of the restaurant.